Uh, John Rob here interviewing Holly from the Lovely Eggs, who's based in Lancaster. So, how are you this morning, Holly? I'm all right, thank you, John. Uh, yeah. I'm good. Yeah. So, I mean, what are you currently working on? Can you work on anything? This. Yeah, we are. We've just well, we've just finished a video that took us two months to make, which was all handmade animation that we just decided we wanted to launch ourselves into. And we were recorded a B side for that single because we'd already recorded the album last year and mixed it. But we obviously, when you're doing seven inches, you need a song for the other side too. So we did that during lockdown, and then we're doing a few collaborations with a few people. Um, so yeah, we'll just keep trying to keep out of mischief, really. And <laughs> yeah. I think in a month, maybe in a month when our little lad goes back to school, we'll pro possibly start working on a new album. You know, just because. If you can't tour, which is what we would be doing, I suppose we've just got to try and rejig stuff so that maybe we're using the time to the best of what we can, as tempting as it is just to sit on your arse and just <laughs> drink strong all day, which is a tempting thing. So when you're recording a new track, did you go in a studio? Or because I guess if actually you use your two-piece band, you, you, you live together in the same house, can you record at home or do you go to a studio? Yeah, we do. Like, we do record at home. We've always recorded ourselves, always. But because David, from since he was a baby, worked at Lancaster Music Co-op and ran that, which is like a cooperative, non-profit making rehearsal rooms and recording studio. So they keep the rates low and so it's accessible to everyone in Lancaster. So we've always recorded there because he used to be the engineer there, him and his mate Ian and his other mate Tom all used to like record bands when it came to recording ourselves, you know, he, he knew what he was doing sort of thing. So yeah, we, I, we, we go between Lancaster Music Co where we can make a bit more noise with drums and stuff. And then the stuff that like overdubs and things that we can't do loud, we do it at home. <laughs> We've got a little studio up in our bedroom and yeah, a spare bedroom. And we just do a lot of the stuff up there. So, so in a really weird way, the way you operate, DIY, a very important part of, of, of Lovely Eggs, is, is actually, it's a precursor to what, how all musicians have to operate now when it's like a pioneer, you're a pioneer of, the, of this kind of period. Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting really, because sometimes I feel slightly defensive about it because we chose it as a route to go down because we knew that the music industry was, to us, so full of bullshit, so so rotten, so full of false, insincere people with a different agenda to the musicians making the music. So we did it as a choice, whereas a lot of people now are just doing it like purely for economics because they can't get, they, they won't get um, a big advance on a record or publishing deal because there isn't the money there anymore. So it's rather than actually choosing it as an ideal because it's a good thing to do, they're just kind of like forced into it. And then there used to be this real big stigma about all oh, your unsigned. And I'd be like, I, it used to really piss me off, you know, when people would say like we were unsigned. I was like, what are you on about unsigned? We don't fucking want to be signed. Like, what are you on about uns? You know, what? It, it's almost like you, you're tarred with a brush of like, you're not good enough or whatever. And pe that's gone now. People are like not embarrassed anymore to not have their own label, no, n not be on a label, you know, and release their own stuff. And yeah, we were doing that, you know, 12 years ago. So. Yeah, I mean, what, what's it? What, what's interesting here is one of the things I want to know is have you changed the, the way you operate as a result of the current situation? But, but you, apart from not being able to tour, which is a key part of presenting your music, really the operation is the same, isn't it? It is the same. And I think uh, because we were DIY before all of this, it's prepared as well, I think, because you know, when you're doing stuff DIY, you're learning all the time. You've got no experience, especially living in Lancaster. Like we're not, I mean, even Manchester, which probably would consider itself from outside the music industry. We're even further outside that. So, you know, we don't know anyone. We don't have any contacts. We don't particularly know what we're doing. We're just learning like on the fly. And I suppose that's what we've done for like 12 years. So we know a lot more than what we did 12 years ago yeah. when it comes to, like routing tours and booking tours and, and just 
you just but you are learning all the time and it doesn't phase you when stuff crops up that you don't expect because that is that is our world is chaos and stuff happening that we, we're not used to dealing with and we don't know what to do and uh and yeah that that's covid really isn't it so i feel we feel quite well prepared psychologically yeah. <laughs> to deal with i mean it's not it's not the effect of the creative process is it you're still being you can still create in this period can't you well, yeah, we're trying to. It's, more, it's, it's slightly more difficult for us because we've got um, a son, a seven-year-old boy. So you've got to like weigh up the time because he's not at school. So we've got to like look after him and then fit in like writing and recording and stuff like that. Um, so it's not as easy as it was when we were child-free and <laughs> partying. And, but we did have huge hangovers then. So that was just like caring for a baby in itself. Do you know what I mean? Like we couldn't do anything till four o'clock in an afternoon. So, we, you know, it's just, we just traded one thing for another. <laughs> I mean, not touring and it's six months now. And that's, that's a long period of time. Is it, does that make a difference to the way you create? Is it, is it actually even changing the way you make your music? Um, Are you going into your kind of Beatles psychedelic? <laughs> period? I don't know. Well, I don't know, like we haven't actually rehearsed for fucking ages, partly because everything's shut, do you know what I mean? Like the mu Lancaster Music Corp's shut and, you know, it's just it's just hard, like, getting childcare. Well, it was hard. It's a, Everything's a bit more relaxed now, but, do you know, like, in the proper full-on lockdown, it was hard to say, oh, can you look after our kid while we go and rehearse? And there was no point rehearsing anyway, because what are you rehearsing for? It's like, <laughs> there's no, no gigs to play, and we know the bloody songs. It's like, well, we, not, not that well, but, you know, we know what they go like, so it's like, there's no point, you know? So, yeah, I d yeah, I suppose. Have you got any plans about how to, how, to, how to play live? Is, um every now and then do you sort of think you know like one of those kind of gigs where 50 people are allowed in or outdoor gig or is is that something that comes up in conversation um if i'm actually brutally honest with you we're not really interested in coming back until it can be back to what it was um, i mean if someone proves me wrong or proves otherwise and shows a way that will make us feel like we're joyous and alive again playing gigs then you know great but i'm not really interested in playing you know driving gigs to people sat in the cars mm -hmm. because it's like i've always said like music to me is something dead personal and i'm not that into music that i love it so much that i just want to play all the time and i don't I'd, i've never ever described myself as a musician and i never will and it's because it's more than it's like the songs and it's the vibe so it's like it's like it's like it's like why i'd never play in a wedding band you know I don't get, <laughs> it's not, it's the music coupled with playing with the right people, coupled with the sorts of gigs that you're playing, you know, and the, and the vibe of that. So if someone said, oh, you can play this driving gig to loads of people locked in the cars, I'm not sure whether I would be down with that. Yeah. In the same way someone said, oh, you can earn 500 quid playing in a wedding band. <laughs> playing all these covers i'd just be like i'd rather fucking work in tesco to be fair do you know what i mean although so. i did see um, a boat gig yesterday online all right <laughs> where it was like a car gig in a lake where everyone was sat in boats and that actually looked like quite good fun <laughs> yeah well like i say my mind is open and if somebody else thinks of a great way and i think oh my god yeah i could do i think that'd be quite good but a lot of the time it's just i just especially at lovely eggs gigs which i think comes from all the hardcore and punk rock scene the, the crowd is as much about the gig as the band who are playing and everyone's sort of on the same level and um and, and that's the problem i think with covid and like all these zoom stuff where people play acoustic guitar in the front room there's no sort of interaction and i can't get my head around that and I suppose yeah it's the same thing it's one of the reasons why I say I'm not a musician and I'm not you know like um because it's more than just playing music playing the notes in the right order <laughs> yeah. we, we never do anyway so <laughs> <laughs> and do, do you have any advice for creative people in in Lancashire in, in, in any field you know how how to sustain your creativity in this really odd time 
Well, I, I really feel it. Well, for us, just throughout, not just in COVID, but throughout the last 10 years or whatever, or just keep your head down and know what you want to do and don't give a shit what anyone else is doing and don't look to what other people are doing or what's successful or what's not because you won't get, ultimately, you won't get pleasure out of that. Do you know what I mean? You'll only get pleasure out of what you're interested in creating. And if you like it, then there might be other people out there that also like it. But yeah, I suppose it's just not letting what's going around you influence you. Try and just try and create what you want to create, I suppose. Um, and I, I think that goes for lockdown as well. You know, there's all, like I say, a lot of people in the front rooms doing acoustic performances and we, we just have just said no because we, we, just, we just don't want to. And I'm not following the crowd, you know, and I just, it's be bloody painful. And I'd hate to inflict that on people because it's just, so it's just like stand up for what you want to do and just try and do it, I guess. Is there any positives in this period? I mean, some people have, um, you know, learned how to use things on, you know, like Logic Pro on their MacBooks or learn to play different styles of music or, I mean, there's, there's not anything anybody has to specifically do. But can you take any positive in this period? Or is it grounding because you can spend more time with your son? Yeah, I think definitely that. And it makes you realise what what you want and what you don't want. You know, sometimes, sometimes when I've been on tour and I've come back and I've got no voice and I've been drinking for 10 days straight, I just think, that's it, never touring again. And then, like, you can't go on tour and you're like, oh, my God, like, I need to get back. <laughs> so I think it does. And I think it does the world good actually to I think it's done the world really good to stop commerce and the economy because I think it needed to be stopped mm. it's what I've been praying for all my life actually <laughs> like all shops to be all shops to be shut and you know get rid of all the bullshit and all the capitalism it's like what I've been you know and all the flights being grounded and stuff and you go out in the countryside and it's proper wild and you, all the wildlife seems to come back, even in urban areas, you know, we just go down Lancaster Canal and it's like full of fish. Usually it's full of bloody McDonald's trays and <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? It's like, it's nice, but I don't know whether people, whether it'll sustain. Was it, was it frustrating putting out your best single and then, then this kind of all happened? I mean, I'm saying it's a best single, it's my favorite song you've done. Which is that? Uh, long stem carnations. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's hard, but I think everyone's doing it. You see now, like when um, the album came out, our album, our distributor was phoning us up, going, "Oh, we don't know whether you should put it out now or we should wait." You know, and in the end, we decided, "Fuck it." We've told our fans that it's coming out. They've waited for it a long time, and we do pre-orders as well. So it's like some of them have paid. Had paid four months in advance for this album we've got to release it so we did but a lot of people and um, bands put it off till they were saying like september they were going to put theirs out and i've noticed that they're actually putting it out earlier as if to say we have got no there's going to be no end to this it's not like put it out in september and things are going to be different mm. so i think people are starting to just think well it is what it is and just like put it out because what else can you do mm. and for us like i know of bands who will write an album and sit on it for two or three years before they get signed and then it gets released properly <laughs> but for us like i couldn't actually i just wanted but when i've written something and when we've me and david have recorded something and got it together we just want it out so we can get on to the next stuff Do you know mm. it's all about our enjoyment of being in a band it's never about you know what is right from a business sense or what the fans want it's just pretty much what we want <laughs> it's like get rid of that now we can do the next okay well that's, that's great holly so where, where can people find you where's the best place well we have a website um which is just the lovely eggs.co.uk and we're on facebook and twitter and instagram and it's just the lovely eggs if you just yeah, across the all lovely... formats yeah yeah Brilliant. across all formats Brilliant. Well, thanks for your time. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, John. And have a have, have a, lo a lovely day, a lovely egg day. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you too, love. With all your many interviews stacked up. Yeah, there's, there's always stuff stacked up, that's for sure. <laughs> we'll have a good one, love. All right, say hello to David, yeah. yeah. I will do, love. Yeah. Nice chatting. Okay, bye. Bye.